Hi, did you know that Newtone was one of the very first companies to make a wireless door chime? All the way back in 1985, they came out with their very first and one of the very first wireless door chimes. Under the Newtone name, it was a model LA99 and it was called the Marconi. Under the Village name, Village was the retail brand by its village by Newtone. It was the retail branding that they use. If you went down to your local hardware store like Ace Hardware or someplace, they would have Village products by Newtone. In the Village line, it was a VG99 and it was called the Menlo Park. Let's take a quick look at it. This happens to be a brand new one. New old stock, as they say. It's quite a large thing. You have the receiver. In the Village line, it has this sort of nice ivory sort of color. And in the Newtone line, for the Marconi, it was in a faux wood teak finish. So there's the receiver. You actually have an antenna on the back that telescopes scopes up for better range. And it operated on four D batteries. How's that? When was the last time you bought something that used D batteries? The transmitter here is a big old thing. It's about the size of a garage door opener transmitter back in the day. And it operates on a 9 volt battery. I'm not going to take the screw out because we all know what that looks like. And according to Newtone at the time, and it even says so on the box here somewhere, you have 32 code variations, operates and requires a 9 volt battery. And somewhere on here, they carry it up with you upstairs, downstairs to the garage, backyard, or barn because, you know, barns are very popular, and you had it within a 100 foot range or so, which was pretty good. These were actually pretty popular, and people like those. But that's not what this video is gonna be about. We'll put these back in the package here. This is for another day. Today we're gonna to talk about a modern wireless door chime and a hack that you can use. In fact, I'll tell you what, we'll take the transmitter and we'll keep that out for a second. We'll put this off to the side and we'll get to the subject at hand here. So here's a 1985 wireless Newtone doorbell transmitter. And here we have a 2020 wireless Newtone transmitter button. And this is a unique product. This is something they've actually made for a while. This is the model PB78LWHCL because you have to have one of those really long, complex model numbers. So basically it's a PB78 is the model. L means lit. WH means it's got a white button cap. And CL means it has a clear bezel that glows when the light is lit up. And this operates on a battery. We'll take the cover off here. And inside is one of these little A32 batteries that everything uses nowadays. And in fact, this one, the person I got this from, put a piece of tape over it so it wouldn't run down. That was pretty considerate of them. We'll put this back in. You've got to put it in the right way. I don't think it's lit up. Maybe the battery's run down anyway. It doesn't really matter. That's not the point of the video. Nope, I don't see a light. According to Newtone, this will work on any current production Newtone wireless door chime. And I didn't write down all the different models, but if you go on their website or search around online, you'll find four or five different models that they make. The reason I decided to make this video is I'm gonna show you a hack, something you can do with this that will make it much, much more usable for most people. A couple years ago, I did this service call. It was up in Sonoma, California. It's in the heart of the wine country. This gal called me and she had this office building downtown 
and downstairs on the street was retail space and upstairs were some offices including her office for her business. And they had an old Newtone entry intercom system that had gone defunct for a long time and she had me go out there and rebuild everything and replace a bunch of things. One of the things that they needed was some kind of doorbell set up because they had some wiring problems in the building and there wasn't any way to run new wires because it's all very fancy upstairs. So I suggested that we try a wireless solution which she, she thought was a good idea because she wanted something that looked appropriate and she had a nice entry door station down for her unit downstairs at the, at the entry into the upstairs. I told her if we used one of these, we can put this in place of the mechanical doorbell button that's on the entry door station for the intercom and nobody will ever know. And she thought that was a really swell idea. One of the things I was concerned about was would it have enough range to operate from the street level upstairs in sort of the back of the building? Because if it's not reliable and it doesn't ring every time, that's not going to work out very well. So we did some testing at the office. Newtone says that this button should have 100 feet of range. Now, I don't know how Newtone measures 100 feet, and I'm pretty sure they're not using the same measuring tape that they used in 1985, because in 1985, you could get 100 feet out of this if there wasn't any obstructions. You know, if you got a big old giant brick chimney in the way, then you're gonna have a little bit of a problem. But if it's wide open and just through regular sheetrock walls or whatever it is, you would get about 100 feet out of this, because I remember that we would try that and make sure that it actually would work properly. Nowadays, they must have some kind of newfangled measuring tape because this thing, the best I could get out of it in the office, which is the receiver, the door chime, was sitting next to the window in my office, and I was all the way at the other end of the office by the entry door, and that's approximately 45 feet. This thing would work maybe six or eight times out of 10 at 45 feet. If I went outside the door and stood on the balcony, which is another four feet, it, would, it wouldn't work very reliably at all. And that really wasn't gonna be acceptable because like I said, I didn't wanna to have to go back to Sonoma if there was a problem. So I started playing around with it to see if there was something I could do to improve it. What I came up with has to do with this little thing right here. Right here on the back end of our PB78LWHCL, is this little round black thing and a little green wire. For those of you who might sort of be in the know just a little bit, this is an antenna. This is the part that the signal transmits out of when someone pushes the button. Now they got it all coiled up here because, I don't know, somebody thought that was a good idea. I disagree. I don't think it should be coiled up at all. And so what this video is really about is how you can do a hack on your PB78LWHCL and take it from having marginally 40 feet of range into something much, much better. So what we're going to do, and this is what I did for the gal in Sonoma, and it worked out really well. What we're going to do first is we're going to take off this black plastic covering right here because it's going to prevent us from doing what I really want to do. So what I'm going to do very carefully, and you have to be careful when you do this, because if you break this off, then you're out of luck. So what I'm going to do very carefully is, and I'll try to do it where you can kind of see, is I'm going to just cut it off. All this is, is a little piece of like heat shrink tubing. So I just have a sharp utility knife, and I'm going to slice it apart here a little bit and we'll very carefully just remove it. And there we go. So now that we've removed it, you can see what's inside is a little bit more of the coiled up green wire. So now what we're going to do is we're going to uncoil the green wire. And this is exactly what I did at the shop that morning on the day before I went to go do the service call. All right, so now we've straightened out the green wire, see? When you uncoil the green wire, the reception improved by about five or six feet. And that was better, but that still isn't gonna be good enough. So I had an idea. Now, the idea didn't just come out of the blue. 
The idea came out of the old days, back when I first started. Newton used to make garage door openers. See, a lot of you probably don't know that. They had some fairly decent radio controls that went along with their garage door openers. And back in those days, garage door openers, they had really good range. You might get, you could get easily 80, 90, 100, maybe 125 feet in really good good conditions. And you know, the, the, the idea was you could be way down the street and you could hit the button and by the time you pull into your driveway, the door is already fully open and stop and you can just pull right in the garage. Those days have changed. They keep cutting back the distance for safety and everything. And nowadays, if you get like 30 feet, you're doing pretty good on a garage door opener. Well, back in those days, if you needed to increase the range on a, a radio control set for a garage door opener, you couldn't do a lot with the transmitters because the transmitters were kind of like this and they were all enclosed and the antenna was built inside of it. It's a little coil antenna with a ferrite core in it. And you couldn't do a lot with that, but you could do a lot with the receiver. And if you put a better antenna on the receiver, you could get a lot more range. So what I decided to do with our little PB78LWHCL was make the antenna longer because that seemed like a really sensible thing to do. What you have to do is, now this is not, this is an insulated wire. The green is insulation. It's like a painted on coating and it's not vinyl that you strip off like regular wire. So you need a little piece of sandpaper like this. And this is just some thousand grit sandpaper that I keep over there on the workbench. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna very carefully sand off the green insulation. And all you have to do is just fold it over the end like this and you just sort of draw it back and you sort of sand it back and forth. And this seems to be pretty durable. So let me get something to lay it down on. Piece of cardboard here. Fold this in half, put it down like this, and we'll go like this. That's not really working very well. So let me get something else. All right, never mind this thousand grit sandpaper stuff. Now we've got some good old fashioned 320. Yep, starting to see some copper now. That's a pretty good coating, I have to give them credit. Oh, wait, look, I was wrong. It is vinyl. Look at that. I thought it was a lacquer coating insulation. See the little piece right here? So it is vinyl. So we can strip it back like a regular piece of wire. Who knew? So we'll go ahead and clip that off. Now we've got a little shiny end on the wire. Now that in itself isn't going to do us any good. So what we need to do is we need some additional wire. So this is a piece of 22 gauge solid conductor wire, not stranded. And it's an 18 inch long piece, which is the same length that I use for the Gallon Sonoma. So what we're going to do is we're going to strip this back like this, and we're going to splice it onto our antenna wire. Now, there's two ways you can do this. You can use some kind of little wire connector. This is a little crimp connector here. We call them bean connectors because that's what they're commonly referred to as. And you could simply pair it up like this. You put the bean connector over the end of the wires and you use a pair of pliers and you crimp it closed and what I would do if you do it that way is I would take it, make it nice and neat, wrap a little piece of electrical tape around it or something so it doesn't get pulled loose because, you know, it only takes a second to do that. What I'm actually going to do here is, before I put the crimp connector on, I'm actually going to twist these together. Like that. And... I'm going to give it a little touch of solder here, like that. Now it won't ever come apart. 
once you've done that, then you can put your beam connector on it. Or if you do it this way, you could also just take a piece of electrical tape and cover it up. So go ahead and crimp this closed like this. And now you got an 18 inch long antenna wire. How about that? So when I did this at the office the day before I went to do the service call, I checked the range on it. With this type of configuration, I was out in the open standing in the parking lot. That's every bit of 145 feet. And it worked perfectly every single time. So I went to Sonoma the next day. I installed all the other equipment. I put this in place of the standard mechanical button on the entry door station to her office. In that type of installation, the door, entry door station is in a metal enclosure that's recessed into the stucco. And you don't want the antenna inside the metal box because that sort of defeats the whole point. The metal will block the signal. So what I did was I drilled a hole through the back of the box and there was a cavity in the wall behind it and I simply put the antenna through the hole and hung down in the wall cavity. And I told her, if it works, answer me on the intercom and let me know. And I pushed it and she answered and said, it works great. So this is an antenna hack on a Newtone PB78LWHCL wireless push button transmitter. And if you have one of these in your house or you want to install one of these in your house and you have things in the way or you're not getting the range out of it that you really want to get, you can do this and it'll give you greater range on the transmitter. I hope you found this interesting and perhaps for some of you it will be helpful. If it is, and it does, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube because that helps us just a little bit. There'll be a banner right here that shows you how to subscribe. Go to our YouTube homepage, click on the bell. And when you click on the bell, click on it to receive all notifications. And every time we post a new video, you'll get a notification and you can watch it. That's all for today. See you on the next video.